So one common question I usually get is, do I need coding skills as part of the Amazon or Amazon Web Services interview as a security engineer? Now, the answer to that question is you should be able to learn how to code, right? You should be able to code simple scripts to automate certain things. Um, you should be able to manipulate APIs to do a certain function. If I ask you, what is a method? What is a function? What is a class? You should be able to answer those questions. If I say concepts like Boolean, array, string, integer, those concepts should be familiar to you. It shouldn't be something that you would have to go back to a reference to understand. You should already have some experience with those type of concepts. After all, being able to script things can really help you in your job function, especially when you need to automate certain things, right? So having the knowledge of coding can only help you in your day-to-day -day function as a security engineer. Now, you won't be asked any questions in the interview as a security engineer at either Amazon or Amazon Web Services of lead code questions, right? You won't be asked lead code questions. You won't be asked to do, uh, you know, what is a binary tree, you won't be asked things related to like Dijkstra's algorithm. They're more going to ask you on how have you used coding to enhance your work experience, right? Have you used coding to automate a process, right? In security, a lot of times this involves moving users or applications from system A and then moving them and migrating them to system B. That's a very common security paradigm. Maybe they may ask you, have you used scripting to automate something, right? To make the whole processes from system A to system B better faster and more efficient. So they're going to ask you more real life working experience of how have you used coding or scripting to enhance your day-to-day -day work life. So if you do happen to pass the phone screening, you'll be asked to go to an in-person interview. Oftentimes at Amazon, it's called the loop, right? Three to four people, they'll come to interview you back to back to back, right? In these interview rooms, sometimes they have a whiteboard and it's very possible the interviewer is going to ask you to draw things on the whiteboard, right? The intent of that exercise is to get you to be able to explain your answers, not just the way you talk, but the way you draw, right? How do you communicate yourself on a whiteboard? So that is one aspect you may have to potentially be prepared for. Ultimately, for any Amazon or Amazon Web Services security engineer interview, the job description will tell you what you need to know in terms of coding. For example, if the job description for a security engineer uh, revolves around reviewing application for certain vulnerabilities in the code, you're going to have to have an understanding on how code works or how it executes, compiles versus if a security engineer job description for AWS or Amazon involves around maybe more on the compliance side, right? governance, being able to identify risks, making sure that Amazon is compliant with regulations, information security regulations, um, things like PCI DSS, then of course you need to understand coding paradigms, but you're probably not going to be asked daily to review application security code because you're not part of the application vulnerability team. So ultimately just look at the job description and that'll give you an idea of how the interview will work, right? For example, if in the job description explicitly asks for leak code related questions, um, then you're going to have to really drill down on leak code related questions. So you really have to tailor your interview approach dependent on what the AWS or Amazon job description entails. Now let's look at a job description of a security engineer position at Amazon. More specifically, this is in the division, Amazon Web Services. For those who don't know, Amazon Web Services or AWS is one of the largest clouds in the world. Therefore, they will have large operations to cover various aspects of the AWS cloud. So now if you look at this job description, right, this is for a security engineer, but not just any security engineer, right? It's for someone who is a security incident response engineer, right? They want someone with specialization in malware analysis, reverse engineering. So maybe if you were someone with experience in a security operations center, also known as a SOC, right? This would be a good fit potentially, right? Because if you look through the basic qualifications, they're looking for, you know, proficiency with the scripting language, high level programming. So somebody who's able to script things, right? Automate things, you know, also as being part of a security team, right? Three years experience, three years experience. They want to BS degree in something technical, if you look at preferred qualifications, they want someone who has experience with things like a seam or a sore, right? For those who don't know, 
SOAR stands for Security Operations Automated Response, and SEAM stands for Security Information and Event Management, right? So, you know, you should be familiar or they want someone who's familiar with things like this logarithm, right? This is one SEAM product in the marketplace today that certain companies use, maybe Splunk, right? Splunk I've seen is a more common platform for SEAM and SOAR type operations, Microsoft Sentinel. This is another SEAM slash SOAR product that companies use to really help their security engineers to develop as well as respond in terms of incident response, right? So if you're preparing for this interview, you really want to highlight, you know, the bullets and the preferred qualifications. You know, if they say advanced understanding of Windows, Linux, or OS X internals, meaning understanding how Linux works beyond, you know, what's at the service level, understanding Windows beyond at the service level. For example, being able to use um, Bash in Linux on how to go through uh, the Linux system, understanding what is sudo, right? That is a very big part of Linux. Windows, likewise, you know, being able to traverse through it using PowerShell, using the command prompt experience with Amazon Web Services. AWS is not just things like EC2, S3, Lambda. There's also an API layer to Amazon that makes Amazon Web Services extremely powerful for end users to use. On the flip side, I'd like to highlight a software development engineer position, also shortened version is SDE in a security team. So these individuals, you're not considered a security engineer, you're considered a software developer. Essentially, you would go through the same practices as any other software developer at Amazon, doesn't matter if you're part of the Alexa division, a certain subset in Amazon Web Services, you're going through the same pipeline, the coding rounds of lead code, right? Drilling through lead code is definitely a necessary in this position, right? So as a software development engineer, as part of a security team, you're just like any other SDE. You're just going to code, 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 and not just code for things that work, but code that's optimized, right? That's where things like um, big O notation comes into play. Uh, if you look here, they're looking for, you know, someone with at least one modern programming language, ideally something object oriented, right? If you look in the description, Java, Go, TypeScript, Python, understanding algorithms, data structure, that's where that leak code knowledge comes into play, databases, right? Being able to, how do I communicate between a database and the application, right? That was really a critical part of Amazon. As Amazon, you know, we work with many, many customers around the world, you know, individuals use the service at a fast lightning pace speed. You gotta be able to, you know, query through a database, put into your application and do what's necessary, right? And as well as looking at here is, you know, having previous experience, right, in software engineering. They're not really looking for someone who was a security engineer, but more of someone who was a traditional software engineer. And if you happen to work in a security space, even better. But what they're looking for is that classic SDE, software development engineer. So in this case, even though you're part of a security team, you're not explicitly a security engineer. So this one, all about the lead code, all about the preparation, coding rounds included. So that is really the extreme difference between this position, a software development engineer, versus what I previously showed, a regular security engineer. Now, I have also been asked on how do I improve my scripting knowledge? How do I improve my scripting expertise? So at Amazon or Amazon Web Services, I've seen people they code a lot in various languages. Python's one of them, Ruby's as well, Groovy as well. Personally, I've used Python a lot as my main tool of choice, right? But of course, like in any other programming language, when you understand the paradigms, you can pretty much pick up any other programming language, right? So personally, what I've done in my journey in terms of improving my Python knowledge, I've gone through things like Think Python, the second edition, right? A lot of times when you go on YouTube, they go piece by piece, but they don't give you the entire picture, right? They don't give you a curriculum that really goes through, how do I get better at something, right? So if you're really just starting out, I, what I've done was go through this entire book, right? Think Python, the second edition. And I have also personally gone through automate the boring stuff, right? So this really just gets you, you know, right on the tracks, right? To create projects ASAP to create things that, you know, instead of more theoretical or things that you're not understanding that you feel is too abstract, 
this starts getting things that are relevant. You know, they have chapters like reading and writing files, right? Working with Excel sheets. I'm pretty sure we all have needed to work with, you know, CSV files sometime, right? This really gives you that, in my opinion, that real life type of input that you can get from Python. Now, once you're more proficient in Python, you're able to create small scripts, functions, and you have an understanding to it. I really recommend if you want to get deeper into Amazon or Amazon Web Services per se is the Boto3 documentation, right? This is basically the AWS SDK for Python, right? This is the easiest way to use, you know, a common scripting language like Python and get it to work, right? You want to automate certain things in AWS, like maybe I need to talk to an EC2 instance, and then I need to talk to an S3 instance. I need to move some things around in the S3 buckets, right? So this is the really the easiest way, in my opinion, to really get your hands-on experience to script with AWS, right? The Boto3 documentation, you can go through there and it will give you really good hands-on experience, right? Not that you're just scripting for the sake of scripting, you're actually using real business use cases, right? Because every day is, you know, businesses, they're trying to speed up things, right? Use APIs to be able to do certain business functions. One example is that a lot of companies is that Amazon's very expensive, right? AWS, you know, the EC2s, they're up all day, all night. Maybe they don't need to, right? Maybe on Saturday, say Sundays, they can be shut down. You can write a script in Python with the Boto3 SDK or the AWS SDK for Python and basically have Saturdays and Sundays to automatically shut down those EC2s and then turn them up very early on the Mondays, right? That's a real use case that can have significant cost savings. So once you get a little proficient with Python and you want to stick with AWS as your um, cloud of choice, I recommend the Boto3 documentation. Anyways. If you enjoyed this video, put a like and subscribe, put a comment below if you got something to say about it. I'll see y'all next time.